What's going on guys? Alex with 814 EDC and today I'm ready to do my full review on the Best Tech Tonic. This is the newest design by Colin Mason Pierre um, over at CM Knife Designs. And this is part of the Lefty Pass Around group. So I think, I don't know if this is Kevin's personal knife that he passed around or, um, or if it's a prototype or what, what it is of his, but um, he's the one that started it. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed this knife, guys. It's, it's cool. Um, you know, not necessarily something I'm going to go jump out of my seat to go buy. But, uh, you know, it's one of those knives that you're kind of glad you're in a pass around group because you get to check it out without having to buy it. Um, but I think it has a lot of good things going for it. And I think it's, you know, I think it's a good step forward for lockback knives um, because it is a lockback. But uh, as we get through the video... I'll explain why it's a cool lockback knife. You guys might already know. Um, but yeah, so this is a Call of Mason Pierre design, um, CM Designs. So the Tonic. Uh, and I also have currently in my possession four other designs by him. Um, so I have two Kubi knives. I have the Kubi Royal that I've had in the collection for a while. This was kind of his first, you know, big design that kind of grew, I think, and got a lot of popularity. So I've had this one for a while. Um, his other Kubi one that I have is the Hyde, which I really, really enjoy. So I have those two, and then I have a Devo Knife Stout, which is a collaboration design between him and Kevin over at Left EDC. And then I also have the Devo Growler prototype, which I'm uh, going to send out later today, but I had it here for the video, so I figured I'd show it. So uh, the two Devo Knives are collaborations between him and Kevin, and the Kubi are um, his own standalone designs. But um, as you can tell, I'm a big you know, big fan of his designs, um, his, his own designs and his collaboration designs with Kev. And, uh, this, like I said, is his most recent design that came out. Um, it's probably has been out for a couple months now. Um, and I have been eagerly waiting to check it out. Um, there's some things that I don't necessarily love about it. Um, which honestly, one of them surprises me because I'm typically a small knife guy and I just, I don't know, this is, feels a little bit small in my hands, but we'll get to that later on in, in the review. So uh, before I jump into materials, according to White Mountain Knives, there are five different variations of it. So the one I have here is, you might not be able to tell because of all the, the juices and, you know, hand sweat that has gone into material or gone into the scales here, but I have the green micarta scales. Might be able to see a little bit better there. See how it's nice and light and green right there? But over here it's so dark from its you know it's basically saturated with hand oils and sweat and anything else you want to think of so uh, i have the green canvas micarta one so there's that one there is a black micarta one there is a um black dlc bladed uh, carbon fiber one a um, natural canvas micarta one and a marble carbon fiber with a satin blade so there's five different ones on there uh, I'll, at the end of the video, if you guys want to go check it out, I'll leave a link specifically to this one uh, at White Mountain Knives. But if you find them, um, you know, you can find the rest of them pretty easily. But I will note right away that the, the uh, green micarta one is out of stock, as well as the black micarta and the uh, carbon fiber with the satin blade. So the only two that are in stock are the... Um, DLC coated blade with a carbon fiber and the natural canvas micarta ones. But again, I will leave a link directly to this one down below. And then from there, you can find them uh, pretty easily. So yeah, jumping into materials, uh, as I've already stated, this is green canvas micarta. Might not look that way, but it is green underneath there. You have a milled titanium pocket clip. That's not deep carry. You have about that much sticking up out of the pocket, um, but it is reversible, which is nice to see. Of course, it is a lock back design. You have dual thumb studs. You have the Best Tech logo there that I don't think is fully straight. I don't know if someone took this apart uh, and you know did some maintenance to it and they forgot to um, you know put it on there straight, but it is what it is. It is kind of a spear, I don't know, it's like a drop point spear point with a little bit of like a sheep's foot style blade. Um, very utilitarian, has a very straight edge right there. There is the CM Knife Designs logo. And if you guys can see that, it is, I don't know if I can, Get a good enough light. Um, M390 right there. There you go. So very premium materials. Um, 
and the micarta is over titanium scales as well they're kind of like bolsters built in uh, or, or overlays i guess you could say uh, it does have a bronzed sort of pivot collar on both sides um, for internal milling there is not a whole lot going on there's nothing really except for one small hole that i can see that i don't think um, is meant for lightweightness i think it's meant for um, where the screw is tapped in through the scales into the um, titanium uh, it does have a titanium backspacer to complete the whole backlock look uh, and it is i believe on bearings um, i'll check it out on the website I, I haven't gone that far to check it out before but i think it's on bearings the way the action feels um i guess it doesn't say on here but I believe these are on bearings. I could be completely wrong, but uh, that's what I think it is on. So, yeah, I think that's all for materials. So we are going to jump into action next. So the thing that makes this backlock knife different than other backlock knives is this has a ball bearing system that runs on the tang of the blade. Um, I don't know. So you guys probably aren't going to be able to see it, but um, on the tang of the blade there that kind of rotates back and forth, there's a ball that runs on there, which makes it a lot smoother and a lot easier um, to be flicked and to be kind of fidgeted with. Because most backlock knives, the spring is just so stiff and strong to where you have to overcome it to fully lock it up. Uh, it's hard to middle finger flick, thumb flick, stuff like that. They're typically meant for slow rolling. Um, the only backlock knife that I've had before, I believe, not I've had two, but you've only seen one on the channel probably. Um, I had a St. Nick's uh, exclusive uh, Native 5 Lightweight in, and I also had a Delica 4 Car Arms Edition, but that was before uh, I started, you know, the channel. But uh, I had the spring sort of worked in enough that if I got, you know, a really good purchase on the Spidey Hole, you could flick it open. But it was tough to do, you know, consistently. Maybe every once in a while you, you would misfire. Um, you couldn't consistently just bang it out like that. So... Colin designed this ball bearing system with the back lock and it just it makes it a lot smoother and a lot easier to flick to thumb flick or middle finger flick excuse me you can still slow roll out so you have kind of the best of both worlds there um, with the slow roll ability and then also with the middle finger flick so that's cool to see uh, can you index finger flick it yeah, you kind of can, but it's just kind of awkward. So there you can get it, but um, I would stick to the thumb flicking, middle finger flicking, and slow rolling. And then for drop, you know, drop ability, it is very smooth. Um, it'll definitely catch you. I've nicked my um, knuckle here a few times from it dropping close and just catching it the right way. So just depending on how much pressure you put on the lock bar, you can get it to go like that, and then you can close it or you can get it to drop to your finger. Again, you're gonna nick yourself probably a few times and then close it. Uh, so it all just depends on how much pressure you're pushing on the lock bar because you can push it the whole way in and pop that up enough to where it's just gonna, you know, kind of, if you guys can see that, uh, free swing like that. Uh, or if you just pop it enough to get it to close a little bit and then you can go up and bang it down with your index finger. So it's definitely i think it's like i said a step in the right direction for backlock knives um i think it's definitely it's new technology um it's a new you know addition to a very old lock uh, backlock knives have been around for you know centuries now they're kind of the the standard and kind of the um there's a lot of history involving them in pocket knives i guess is what i'm trying to say but i think with this new lock it makes it it kind of bridges the gap between you know fidgetability and functionality and everything like that and it just makes it a little bit more modern with still feeling you know sort of grounded and still have that really strong lock back um something that kind of i it's it's not as the same thing but something i kind of want to compare it to um and you know parallel to it is um slip joints are a very old style of knife as well but with jack wolf knives i haven't had any of them on the channel before but if you guys are in the knife road, you you know definitely have heard of Jack Wolf knives. They're they're kind of killing it right now with the um, slip joint game. I'm sorry, I'm digressing this, but um, slip joints are such an old you know very historical type of knife, and they're not 
you know, modernized. They don't really have new modern materials like titanium, micarta, M390, 20CV, stuff like that, until Jack Wolf started doing it. And now all of his models are still slip joint, but you get that modern ability with the new materials, upgraded blade steel, stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of how I'm considering this, because uh, you're taking a backlock, but you're adding some, some modern ability to it um, that adds to, like I said, fidgetability, functionality, you know, stuff like that. So um, I think the action is good. You know, I don't, I'm definitely not going to, you know, pick this up and fidget with it over some of my other knives. Um, but if you want a backlock in the collection and you want um, something a little bit more, like I said, fidgetability, you know, fidget friendly, stuff like that, I think this is a great knife to look at. And um, I have, I really have no complaints with the action. It's smooth, any blade play. There's a smidge of blade play, but you know, not very much at all. So you can't really complain about that. But um, overall, action is is good. It's it's very surprising, uh, and I think I noted this in the unboxing. But um, Kevin actually pointed this out when I was watching one of the videos that he posted about this knife. Um, when you go to deploy it, it almost like it, it hits a wall there, um, so you can feel it come out, and it kind of like gets to a breaking point, like a wall of pressure, and you just have to uh, see. I missed it there, but you just have to get to there and then fly through it and it opens right up. But I just think that's kind of interesting. Um, and I wanted to note that as well. So uh, yeah, action is good and uh, no complaints really there for me. So next up is Ergos. And this is a small knife guys. Um, and I typically like smaller knives, but just in, and that's not to take away from the Ergos because the Ergos are actually really good. You have this forward finger choil here. You have a, another finger groove here and it kind of just tapers off towards the end. And on this side, it's just pretty much you have a little bit of a curvature kind of going here, but it's pretty much straight back. Um, so I can get all four fingers on here if I'm choked up this way. You know, very comfortable in that regard. But if you choke back, my pinky's kind of just like hanging off here on the butt end of the knife. Uh, I don't really, you know, recommend that. I think if you're going to be using this and you have bigger size hands like me, you want to choke up. You want to get up into this grip here. Um, your thumb can kind of fall back here by the thumb studs up front here, depending on what you're doing. If you're going to be doing push cuts, uh, something you know, being really careful about what you're cutting out or cutting around. Um, the choked up grip is definitely going to suit you the best. And there's no jimping up top here, but I don't think you need it with this type of knife. Um, and the micarta is very, you know, at this point it's worn in, but it's nice and soft. Um, has some good texture texture to it, excuse me. Um, the pot clip does not stand very proud of the knife at all. Um, so you really, you know, choked up, I can't feel it at all. If you're going to be, oh, series popping up again. Choked up, I can't feel it at all. Choked back, uh, you know, I really still can't feel it. So depending on the size of your hands and where it ends up um, on your palm, you might be able to feel it, but for me, it was not an issue at all. Um, you know, it's just, it's very comfortable, but there's just something about like, it, it just feels too small to me, in my opinion. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like this should maybe be a little bit bigger. Um, I just had always kind of thought about that as I was carrying it here and there, as I was fidgeting with it. Um, not that I had really much of an issue at all, uh, it just seemed a little bit too small and I just, I feel like it might be suited a little bit better if it had a little bit more length to it, if it was just overall a little bit bigger. But, um, you know, as the knife stands now, as long as you're choked up in this position, it's very comfortable. You know, the, the my card, like I said, is nice and soft and has some nice chamfering to it and the um, same with the titanium bolsters up here. So no complaints at all um, with this model as it is now. I just wish it was maybe a little bit bigger. So um, next up is carry. This knife is pretty lightweight um, because you do have those two um, overlays per se of micarta and the titanium makes it pretty lightweight as well. So it just drops in the pocket. And this knife is is very small. Um, it's probably one of the smaller knives that I've checked out in a while. Uh, I can kind of can compare this to, I wanna say the banter that I have is about this size, um, but it carries well. You drop it in your pocket. You do have a little bit of knife sticking up out of your pocket. Not that much, um, but it doesn't really bother me because I think the mill pocket clip looks good aesthetically on here, but when it drops in your pocket, you have no flipper tab, no jimping, anything like that to catch your hand on. Um, I've carried this front right pocket of jeans. I think I threw this in my back right pocket of my shorts once, and I've also tossed this in my pocket of my gym shorts, just being around the house. Um, and, you know, I had no no issues there. Like it, it's light enough, lightweight enough to where you're not gonna feel it. Um, you know, overall, um, could it be a little bit more lightweight if you added some internal milling? Yes, but I don't know if because the 
the titanium is so thin because they milled it down to add the micarta on there. I'm assuming that's why you can't really take too much out um, for weight pockets. So I'm guessing that's why they didn't do that. But as it is, you know, it's it's lightweight enough for being a small knife. Um, it's not heavy or anything like that. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a pleasure to carry. I think this is kind of a definitely a, a little bit more of a gentlemanly type knife. In my opinion, I would consider this to be something you could toss in your pocket to, you know, it's definitely a good EDC knife, um, good grinds, good cutting ability, um, nice sharp edge, M390, all that. But this is something I would love to toss in my pocket for like a date night, a wedding, um, something I'm getting dressed up a little bit more for. I think this would suit it very well, um, considering it's a, it's a back lock and uh, it's nice and lightweight and um, pretty compact. So uh, carry is good. And that takes me to my final category of price point and what I recommend this knife. So I, I think I would recommend this knife, guys. Um, if you're interested in, again, I, th I think the biggest thing here is if you're you're a backlock guy and you want to check out the new the new lock, the new ball bearing system that Colin had designed for this knife. I think it's something that you definitely can go pick one up and check it out. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of over the backlock stage right now. I don't I haven't had one in the collection since I sold the. Uh, uh, excuse me, Native 5 Lightweight. Um, they're not something that I actively go out of my way to carry, to check out. I will say that the Delica 4, um, or the Delica Warncliffe, and I think it's K390 or M390, I've wanted to check out a few times, but uh, I haven't yet. But I think, you know, with me not being a lockback guy, if I ever want to get one in the collection, I think I might go out of my way to get this one, just because I want to support Colin. I think it's a, it's a good design. Um, you know, fit and finish is good. This is a Best Tech model, so everything that I've had from Best Tech recently has been, um, you know, materials and fitness, fit and finish wise, great. You know, no complaints at all there. Um, but you know, for the price point, so this model is two hundred and eighty nine dollars. The carbon fiber versions are three hundred and six. So if you find them on White Mountain Knives website, you can use Kevin uh, Lefty Ten, Kevin's code Lefty Ten for ten percent off. So it'll knock some of that down. But I do think, you know, personally, I think that might be a little bit high. Um, I think this model would better be suited around between the two to two fifty price point. Um, I think this three hundred dollars is just, you know, for a knife this small. Um, again, you're getting micarta titanium, um, a nice pot clip, M three ninety, a nice blade, um, that new ball bearing lock system, stuff like that. I get it. You're getting good materials, but for me, it just seems a little bit too high. Like I was, I was honestly kind of surprised. Um, when this knife finally got put up on White Mountain Knives, even before they went live, uh, you could still see the listings on there. I just thought it was, you know, it was the first thing that kind of stuck out to me. I was like, oh, I'm going to go check out the, the new tonic and see what the price point is. Um, and then I saw it was like 290 bucks and I was like, kind of just mad about it. Like I get it again, good materials and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I really do like Colin's designs. As you can see, I have, you know, three in the collection, a couple more on the way. Um, well, two of his and then two designs or one collaboration with Kevin, but uh, nonetheless, I like his designs. Uh, and it was just, it was, the price point was enough to keep me away. But if you're comfortable spending it on this, um, I do think, you know, you're not getting a bad deal. I think it just is a tad bit overpriced for me again, maybe two to two fifty somewhere in there, but, um, I can't complain. The knife is good. Uh, fit and finish is good. Materials are good. Ergos are good. Uh, you're getting a cool action for a lock back definitely unique and i think everybody should um, if you know if you're curious about it definitely go pick one up to try it out and yeah yeah so i'm happy got to check it out again i think this is kevin's knife or um, a prototype that he got no i don't think it's a prototype um, i think it's kevin's personal knife i don't know for sure um but it is through kevin you know lefty lefty i almost said lefty 10 lefty edc's pass around so um yeah guys this was my full review on the best tectonic Cool knife, just not something I'm going to actively go out and pick up. But uh, like I said, I really was happy to check it out. Um, and it's one of those knives that um, I had kind of had my eye on for a while. Uh, and that's, again, the kind of a kind of perk of being a reviewer. You get to check out stuff that, you know, you normally would have to buy. Um, but, yeah, so leave a comment down below, guys, what your thoughts on this are or is. Excuse me. Um, do you have this? Are you willing to pick one up? Are you wanting to pick one up? Stuff like that. I love hearing from you guys. Um, I try to respond to all my comments when I see them. So, um, but I'm going to wrap this video up here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, don't forget that this will be linked down below to White Mountain Knives. If you're interested, uh, Blue Creek Knives is also always listed down below in the, in the um, description. 
please use code 814EDC for 10% off of your purchase. Um, it helps me, helps you guys. And uh, yeah, it's always linked down below. So um, just go to any one of my videos if you're interested in that. But um, yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.